Well, you know, tonight um, wasn't really about uh, our performance on the court. I think the bigger picture here is that, you know, we, we clinched uh, an outright regular season championship, which, uh, you know, in, in today's world of March Madness, I, I know sometimes can be lost in the shuffle, but I sound like a broken record winning a regular season championship in a, in a conference like the Pac-12 and some of the conferences that are out there is is uh, very rewarding because of the home, in a way, nine at home, nine on the road, and playing through injuries, foul trouble, and all the different things that can that can distract a team or or make it for uh, an adverse situation. And clearly, you know, with our team, we've we've fought, scratched, and clawed all the way through. So, very gratifying to be able to do it, especially at home in front of our amazing fans. Uh, I can't imagine that any arena. This weekend could have had more pageantry, more electricity than McHale Center. And a heartfelt thank you to everybody who is here uh, to make it uh, extraordinarily special for our program and, and for our team. Uh, we did not play well. Uh, having been in a number of games like this, you want it to be easy, and it's not going to be easy. And then when it's not easy, you, you start to put that pressure on yourself. And we, we played with a heavy burden uh, really for about 30 of the 40 minutes, you know, we, we pressed. Uh, you know, Alonzo wasn't himself, wasn't just him. Even Dusan and Parker, it means so much to those guys. They've been here for four years. They want to play well. Uh, it, it can sometimes work against them. But it was just simply tonight about being able to uh, win the game and then close this chapter of our season and hopefully move forward with a lot of energy and uh, able to play our best basketball. You can pick a word. Uh, what word would you use to describe everything that's transpired the last week? Um, devastating. And, you know, the second word that I would use is remarkable because uh, a lot lesser programs, teams, Bigger picture, universities would have crumbled and we didn't. And I think that's something about us and our future. Congratulations on that regular season title. What was going through your head when you were on top of the ladder with the, with the net there? What were you thinking about? You know, really just trying to soak it all in. You know, I think the one thing you learn is uh, what you have today can be taken very easily. Um, and uh, you can't take anything for granted, especially uh, a moment like today. And, you know, with a team in college basketball, there's so much change from one year to the next that, of course, we're going to look totally different. A lot of the players that you watched play tonight uh, won't be here next year. And uh, you really just try to soak it all in and enjoy it and try to make it last as long as you can. The reasoning behind, uh, kind of touched on a little bit, behind re uh, announcing Raleigh and Alonzo and DeAndre, is it just the fact that you yeah, they're not coming back. <laughs> and everybody knows they're going to go pro early. And what was it different? Was it different this year? Anything about these three guys? No, I mean, you know what what it used to be sometimes isn't today. You have to adjust with the times, and uh, you know those guys deserved uh, an ovation, just like you know the seniors, because uh, they're not going to play in McHale again. You talk about the struggle to get to this point, but once again, you found a way in the final three minutes or whatever it was. Just again, how you pulling that off, and, and what's, it, what's it taking? Well, I, I really think we're a team that closes games out well. We we didn't do that at the very beginning of our season, but we learned how to do it. And whether it's a high percentage from the free throw line, or whether it's uh, having a guy like DeAndre. A, a player on the perimeter like Alonzo that's so good at making free throws, you know, Raleigh, the versatility. And I could keep going. I mean, Dusan Parker. But uh, we have the makings of a group that really knows how to win. And uh, hopefully that'll be, that'll continue for us because really every game moving forward will have that feeling at the four minute media timeout. Are you more relieved that the speak is over, especially today, or maybe a little sadness because you, you won't have this group again here in McHale ever again? No, I love our team. I mean, I, I love those guys. They've been through an awful lot. And, uh, you know, don't don't get lost in the shuffle what you witnessed today. And that is you saw a player score 26 points and have 20 rebounds in a very low possession game. 
Uh, you could watch games in McHale for the next 10 years and not see that happen ever again. So DeAndre didn't need an exclamation point, but he certainly put one on his freshman year, at least from a regular season perspective. Uh, yes. Unanimous. Uh, Naismith, Naismith and Wooden this week alone, what's your case? I mean, I'm sure there doesn't really need to be one made, but what's your case for him to win National Player of the Year? I don't need to campaign for him. He, he, who he is speaks for himself. He's a tremendous player. He does it on offense. He does it on defense. He does it in big moments. Um, he's physically like Superman, but he's also very skilled. And usually you're skilled and not Superman, but if, you, if you're a guy like him is physically gifted, plus you have the skill level and the intelligence, he's going to be a player that, uh, that I think will go down as one of the great ones to play our game. That's how I see him. Um, you know, he's a once-in-a-generation once in player. I, I doubt if I'll ever coach anyone like him again. And I, and I don't mean that in that we, we won't try, but there just aren't many DeAndres walking around. Along those same lines, on Thursday night, you called Deuce on one of a kind. What did you mean? Well, you know, I think the fact he went one for nine tonight in this type of game backs up what I mean from this perspective. He loves college basketball. He loves the University of Arizona. He loves Tucson. You don't do what he did at the end of the game and pull off your uniform and have a special T-shirt to thank the fans. And uh, the guy is just, he's really an incredible kid. And we're, we're very, very lucky to have him. So you're the favorite guy that you kind of developed from this young Serbian kid, all of, possibly an all-pack 12 selection? Yeah, I wouldn't say, you know, favorite. There's quite a few that you put in his category. Um, and we're lucky because... Uh, that's, that's a really special category. But I, if you look at who Dusan would have been early in his freshman year, I can, I can remember like it was yesterday, watching him practice against Caleb and worrying that Caleb could almost like break him in half, you know, because Caleb was so physically strong. But Dusan, he's never backed down. He's worked hard, and, and obviously he's had a great senior year. He didn't play well tonight, and what I meant by what I said earlier is it almost meant too much to him for him to play well tonight. They were mentally exhausted. Also, Parker mentioned it a little bit. Yes. It's been a hard week. When you talk about, uh, about uh, DeAndre's Pac-12 play of the year anyway, I mean, is it possible? Sometimes there's a, isn't there sort of a thought, uh, if it's close, maybe you go with seniors in, in these situations with the team? That's why I wonder, like Holiday, for example, does, you know, do you expect you might get some votes or do you think? No. It's, unan <laughs> it's unanimous. <laughs> There's a couple of coaches that have said he's, Allman and Hurley specifically, he's the best big that they've seen or coached against. Would you say that? He's, he, I would agree with him. Mm -hmm. so what was that moment like uh, now that your son was uh, a senior graduating for you and your family, uh, you know, kind of a unique situation to have your son? No, I mean, I'm proud of him. I love him uh, to death. You know, he stood on that wall for, uh, every press conference for four years. And, you know, being a manager, I can make the argument that it, pre it prepares you for life better than anything because it's, uh, you're behind the scenes, you don't get a lot of credit, but you're incredibly important to the organization. And it's not just Austin, we have a great managerial program and a lot of guys have left that program and gone on to do great things and I feel like he'll be one of them. Because he's behind the scenes, how much does he mean to you specifically this week alone? Senior week is always emotional, it's always uh, important. And no doubt, it's uh, maybe a little bit extra, extra emotional or important because you know he's a senior. But I know he's going to leave here and go on to do great things. Do you, uh, do you like conference tournaments, or if you had your way, would you have a week off? And... No, I like conference tournaments. Uh, you know, I, I think it, it really, if you approach it right, it prepares you for for the NCAA tournament. Uh, if you lose. It's a loss that feels completely different because it's the first time that you 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 have that feeling of we don't have a game tomorrow, and the reason is because you lost. If you win, I think you build confidence, and you uh, you get toughened through elimination basketball, and I think you're more ready for what's to come. Now, if you physically get beat up or a player gets injured. You know, that, that's what you hope doesn't happen, but none of us can really control that. We're going to try to be our best, and, uh, you know, anything less I don't think will prepare us for what's to come. Is 
there anything special that you want to do to have to get them ready for the stretch of having that many games right in a row? No, we have to be smart. It's been a heck of a week. It's been a long season. We have to balance, you know, rest, mental, physical, uh, with you know, a couple really good practices, so we're ready to go. I think we will play the winner of Arizona State, Colorado. You know, both teams are very good, so we'll have to be ready. You expect to have Byron back then? I mean, you said yeah. you expected to, but he didn't quite make it, or what went happened? Yeah, he went through shoot around, and um, he's just about symptom free, but we expect Ira to be available for our postseason game on Thursday. So has he been cleared for contact yet, or at least he's still waiting on that? That, that will be the final straw, which we anticipate him being cleared for Monday. Would you, would you, uh, just your thoughts on getting Talbot in the game and what he's done for you? You know, all, everybody who played in the game is important. Uh, you learn from the managers to, you know, we call them the scout team, to every coach. You know, you, you have to be able to do your assignment, do your job. And there's so much parity in college basketball that there's not as much room for error. To be, to be the winner or loser, and you know Talbot is a fantastic kid, great student, has helped us every single day that he's been here. Okay. Thanks.